Now I have these blocks soaking in crushed ice and water. If the tissue is particularly dry, let's say it's spleen or bloody tissue or hemorrhagic ovary that happens to be really dry and another one, um, pituitary gland tends to be very, very dry. You, there's a couple tricks that you can do. You can either put it, start it off with some warm water and I keep these um, slide bottoms from the charge slides just for that purpose and I can put warm, not warm, but room temperature water and I can try soaking at that. And if that's not quite working or kind of giving us the result we want, you can use a 3% ammonium hydroxide. And you can use that for soak. And be careful with it because it only should take like a minute or so for it to soak in the ammonium hydroxide, a minute to five minutes at the most. And you want to kind of keep checking your block face to make sure it's not getting over soaked with this. But that's a nice trick. Also, this ammonium hydroxide. Um, you still should be able to get very good stains and it's, you can still um, do immunohistochemistry on your tissue with that. The only problem with it would be is if you over soaked it, if you put it in there and then you forgot about it. So don't walk away from it if you're using that chemical. All right, let's put a fresh blade in. I'm actually going to save this blade because it was a fresh blade. And um, I just used it for a quick facing. So we'll get another fresh blade out of here. I use these AccuEdge blades, high profile on this microtome. Um, this brand seems to work very nicely. Another brand I recommend is the Awatrami um, lab uses is a Sturkey blade. And those are very nice, especially for cryosectioning. So, but this is the brand that um, several labs that I work at have found really good results with. They don't have a um, coating on them like some blades that you, you buy. So, okay, so we got the fresh blade. We're gonna slide it in. I'm gonna start on this part of the blade first and use it. Depending on your tissue, you should be able to cut um, You'll start seeing when it acts up and it's starting to give you knife lines and stuff. You should probably get, depending on the tissue, if it's a good soft, regular, like testes tissue, you could probably get 20 to 40 slides out of one blade. We'll start with our testes tissue. Now it's got a little bit of water on the front. And that can interfere once it gets on the plate with you get, trying to pick up your ribbon. So I'll just blot it off a little bit with a Kim wipe. I back it off the blade some. And I'm bringing it up forward. As soon as I see that I'm close, after pushing it with the advance and retract wheel, I stop and I just do full turns. Now I'm a little bit close to this edge of this blade so I'm going to push it over just a little more and make sure the blade is seated nicely on the bottom. And I have my forceps. Don't use your fingers. You can cut yourself very easily. Use the forceps for picking up your ribbon. Using your fingers is a bad habit that um, a lot of old time technicians do. Okay. And I made a couple adjustments earlier, so this block um, actually needed to get faced again a little bit for those earlier adjustments or later adjustments. Okay. I did a lot of putzing with this particular microtome and that was again because someone else had used it and, and readjusted it. So we had a nice ribbon going. This is where I use the stick. I moisten it just a little bit and you either come up under or over the top and it helps you to have a good secure hold on your ribbon as you bring it to the water bath. 
Now that's not the best ribbon and my block could probably be chilled again. I think when I refaced this one it needed just a little bit more. There's only one section out of this bunch that is any good and that would be this one. And it's acceptable. I could take it if I was only looking for one section. But really I would like to, really I would take this block and I would soak it some more and move them right along to another block. Between each block you want to swipe your water bath. So you take a Kim wipe and you bring it across. And that's so you don't pick up any extraneous tissue from the ribbon before. Okay, so I'm going to try this kidney block that we did earlier. Now remember, we didn't embed this one correctly on purpose. So what's going to end up happening, I'm going to get this kidney, this part of the kidney, but I won't have that one. So this was a good um, demonstration for you to see. Now eventually I'm going to probably face down until I do get that that one, but that was a lot of tissue wasted on this one to finally get to that. So at the embedding level, when you see that, just simply re-embed it. Okay, so I went fast to just get into the tissue. Now it's giving me a beautiful, nicely chilled ribbon. Bump my elbow. And I bring the ribbon over to the water bath, and that's a very nice ribbon. I see a little bit of knife line there for whatever reason, but it's still acceptable. And it's not affecting my tissue, the area of interest. Now again, you can see that I have that one whole kidney, and I'm just starting to get into that other piece on that section. Okay, pitching, picking up the tissue sections. We have um, three types of slides in this lab. And I keep them stacked up here and we have an extra supply just across the hall here in the scope room. The three types of slides that we have are, coat, we have a plain slide with no coating, just a regular plain. These are great for LCM. These are great for just routine H&E stains on tissues and stuff like that. We have these Snow Coat Extra Slides by Sergi Path. And, it, and I have them stacked with the label facing out so you can see it's just pre-clean microscope, Snow Coat Extra, and then this one actually says plus so you can see the labels right away. Um, these are an actual coated slide with some a type of adhesive. So they're great for immunohistochemistry and stains like silver stains and stuff like that where the tissue could come off easily. And then we have a charge slide which also has a coating but it's a charged coating. Ours happen to be blue. We've color coded our slides for this lab. The um, plain ones are white are the snow coat extra ones that we have ordered, we've kept as yellow, and then our charge plus slides, we keep ordering as blue top slides. That may change later on, but that's what we have now. These are great for just about anything. Um, they're quite expensive, so we tend to try to use the snow coat extras as often as we can. Um, the charge slides we'll use for special techniques, sometimes immunohistic chemistry, in C2 hybridization, and stuff like that, and things that we want to have more reassurance that it's really not going to come off. Frozen sectioning, maybe we'll use these. But so far, the snow coats have done quite nicely for us. Okay. For now, for our purposes, we're just going to use these um, regular plain slides, but I wanted to um, demonstrate something else with this um, snow coat extras and it would be the same situation with the charge slides and I wanted to show you something. Now that our microtome is fully adjusted everything should be going right along smoothly. Usually you don't have to come down and sit down and make all these adjustments but in actuality that was good for you to see me doing that for this demonstration. Um, but hopefully you won't have to go through that kind of a situation again in the future. Okay, here's our plain slide. Um, 
It's better to not pre-label your slides. Okay, for labeling slides, you want to use either a regular pencil, a number two pencil, or you want to use this KP Marker Plus. I highly recommend this particular brand because this brand makes it through the silver staining, microwave techniques, and immunohistochemistry. And so far, um, Others in the lab have used this for in situ hybridization and it hasn't come off. It's held up quite nicely. Also, this KP Marker Plus can also be used for marking cassettes. So this one is by from Mercedes Medical. So you can call them and order more. What you don't want to use is a Sharpie, any type of Sharpie. You don't want to use that. It comes right off with any alcohol and you won't know what your slides are labeled. Now, as you're cutting your block, you would label your slide and have a slide labeled and ready. So I've got this slide as 53992. Now, if I'm doing serial consecutive sections, I would do 53992 and I would put a little one in the bottom. If I, let's say, in this one, I'm going to pick up three sections, or three um, rows of two. So I would go five, three, nine, nine, two, two. And I would pick it up in, in order for consecutive sections if I was doing serial sectioning. Five, three, nine, nine, two, three. You get the idea. The other thing about um, using a pencil that's important to know is little pencil flakes and shavings actually can get onto the slide. So I tend to do a little tap to get some of that off. And that's another reason I like these KP marker pluses because they don't give you that pencil shavings and they don't smear. All right, so for picking up the sections, I tend to use these little curved forceps. You can use these forceps. It, you know, you can get used to doing that. And I kind of tease it away, and then I give it a, it's all in the wrist, it's a little like that. If it's trying to stick, you can take it this um, force up and you can dip it in your ice bath, your crushed ice, and you can, um, since I separated this one, I want to get it, because I don't want to lose my, um, my orientation of this tissue and I know that that was my first section, so I want to pick it up. Now you have to touch it. When you have an uncharged or uncutted slide, you have to kind of touch it off, otherwise it wants to float down to the bottom of the slide. You can see it's still wanting to kind of float down, so you have to give it a little touch. Okay. And this was my second. You, wanna, you don't want to lose your place and where, where you're at because you've got these in consecutive order give it a little touch. Now you want it really nicely centered. Now I'm going a little slower than I normally do for the purpose of this demonstration. Okay, I tend to use the curved forceps for me. That's I like them better. So I'm going to make sure they're cool so they don't stick to my ribbon and damage my ribbon. For the curved forceps, you know, some people use the tip. I find that it doesn't stick as much if you kind of use more towards the curve. I mean, I guess maybe I do it intermittently, but use one or the other as I'm going along. And I make this look really easy. It's really some coordination to be, I've been doing this so long. So you'll want to practice that, just separating and picking up the ribbons. Another thing about uncoated slides. Now this has been on here. It's an uncoated, untreated slide. And I didn't, let's just say I didn't like the orientation or, oh, I was supposed to put four sections on this. Well, this gives you some leeway to float the section back off. Let's say I wanted the four sections on one. So you can float those back off and redo them. Or if it slipped down or something. And let's just say you decided you wanted four sections right next to each other. So you can do it that way and do a different orientation. Okay. 
Again, we're gonna swipe. There's a little bit of tissue here. Getting it on the edge isn't so much as having it actually in the water. So we'll give that a little swipe. Okay, so I'm gonna throw these slides away because I'm just showing you for demonstration. They weren't fully soaked. All right, let's see what's happening with our going back to our testy section now. Now I saw that that part of the blade had a few little streaks of lines there. So I'm going to move this over to a different part of my blade. You should, sometimes you can get a blade that you can last for a long, long time. Sometimes you get a blade that, you know, for whatever reason doesn't seem to last as long and cut as nicely and you just don't get as much out of it. Again, I'm going to back this off a little bit. And then slowly come forward and see what, how close I am. Now I'm gonna go a little faster until I get up to my tissue. When I'm that close, I don't feel like I wanna be turning my advance and retract wheel. Okay. So now it's giving us a very nice ribbon. Although it kind of fell apart there. Okay, so that was a little bit clumsy in getting it over to the water bath, but you get the idea. Now, out of these sections, this one is not usable because there's a flaw in this area. If it was my best section there, it would be still acceptable because it was only one little part of the epididymis. That one had a little floater from the paraffin that got picked up on the top of the thing, so that's not any good. So out of these sections, the two that are the best and, and good would be these two right here. So those are the only ones I'm gonna take. Now, if I were cutting cereal sections, I would have this really beautifully aligned and take much more care to get as many real sections as possible because it's critical. Again, I would have, I, I would have previously numbered the slide to the block. And then I would pick it up. And there you go, and you've got the tissue on that slide. And those will be very nice sections. Okay. And we'll put the block aside. Now the reason I don't, I, it's better to not pre-label all your slides. Because if you pre-label your slides and you kind of get in the mode of cutting, say, 20, 30, 40 blocks at a time, it's very easy to pick up the wrong slide that's not matching that block because you're kind of getting a zone as you're doing this and space out. Sometimes you have to wiggle this lever a little bit to get that knife out. Just kind of loosen it and there's a little paraffin debris back up in there somewhere. All right, there's another way to um, get the microtome back into a line. It takes a little bit of practice to do this, but you can do this with some blank blocks and, um, and try it out. I went through quite a bit of adjustment through that. You kind of watched me kind of painfully going through that a little bit. And I'm used to this, so you can imagine what it would be like for you to have to adjust that. But another trick would be is what I call the block turning method to make to get this nice and even also. So you put this in and you, in the way, you know, one way, and you turn it, and you can see that it's giving you a nice ribbon, but is it even, which, so that, that was real nice. But what you wanna do, and to make sure that the black face is gonna be fairly even, is flip it the other way. And if you flip it the other way, and if it's in within a few strokes of being um, in the same alignment, then you've got a real nice, nicely set up um, chuck there. 
and it should give you a very nice ribbon. So hopefully this will be um, pretty much the same within a few strokes as the other way, and it is. It's ever so slightly off, and I can make adjustments, but to me that's acceptable. It's within a few strokes of being the same as the other way, and I'm still getting a nice ribbon. And if, you do, if you're able to do that, then your microtome is nicely adjusted. Again, I'll turn it the other way because I'm used to having it, my um, blocks facing that way. Although, with this particular tissue, now if I saw that somebody had embedded this this way, I might put um, my block in this way because I want my ribbon to come off the way so I can pick it up easier. This would happen to be a mouse embryo and somebody had embedded it that way. So if I saw that and somebody brought me blocks, I might not do it my normal way. I might say, oh, for that orientation and for picking up on the slides, I'm going to probably mount this in the chuck. I've locked my um, flywheel, so I would mount it in the chuck this way. Oh, another important thing is mounting in the chuck. You would take your thumb and you put it on here for leverage. And you use a couple fingers, one or two fingers, and you pull this forward. Again, you, you, I'll show you on this side. You take your thumb for leverage and you use a couple fingers and you pull this forward. And that release it. Then you put the block in and make sure the block is seated in the back nicely. If you have the block, if you, did, if you miss put it in there and it's like this, you're going to come down and you're going to chunk that because it's not in there nicely. So make, make sure you have it seated, resting against the back. So again, um, put your thumb here for leverage. Use two fingers and put it in evenly towards the back. Okay. So I wanted to show you that method of aligning the chuck instead of just keeping trying and trying and trying like I was doing, that's another method that, um, and again, you know, if you flip the block, if it's way off one way or the other, when you flip the block, you're gonna have to make an adjustment at a halfway point. So if it's like way off to the left and you need to, um, to tilt it one way or another, you're only gonna tilt it halfway because when you flip it again, it's, you got to, it's another half. You're not going to do it the full amount that you think it might need. You'll see what I mean when you're actually doing it. Okay, let me get this forward here. All right, so it's, this machine is ribboning, ribboning beautifully. Took a while, but it is. As you can see, very even, very beautiful ribbon with that um, block method. And then I would, you can use forceps too, by the way. Dip it in the water and to grip it and bring it over and then lay your ribbon down. So very smooth, very nice ribbon. Although the tissue is dry, you can see a little bit of holes and stuff. So I would soak that longer, obviously. Okay, moving right along. This microtome also um, is a type of microtome that does need oiling. However, um, probably every once a year, we should have somebody come in. I don't want to go over oiling this microtome with you guys. Just get the um, Bio One medical let me see if i can find his card quick. we have um tech one biomedical is the company we have used so far um matt mincer he's given us really good service when we give him a call and he also does the um the anatomic pathology lab at the northwestern memorial hospital he does all of their equipment um basically how the this microtome is not too hard to oil, but you'd have to take off the flywheel with an Allen wrench, and you have to go from behind and unscrew that and lift off the whole cover. Take this off and lift off the whole cover and then oil in there at the correct places. Um, 
that's probably too much for you guys to have to deal with. I'd just call Matt Mincer and have him do that. The same thing goes for our other microtome. Um, once a year, have it boiled really good. It probably should be done more than that, but we seem to be getting away with once a year. All right. Now, let's talk about this microtome. This microtome is a great beginner microtome, like I said, because it's... And when you turn the knob, it goes left to right. When you turn this knob, it goes up and down. Great. Nice for the chuck. I'm going to lock this. I'm going to slide the blade out. I'm going to wiggle this lever. Again, there's probably some stuck paraffin on the back of this. Okay. Just kind of loosen the blade. And I'll keep that blade because it was a nice blade. It'll be good for facing. Let's go over to this microtome over here and talk about it a little bit. Okay. This is um, a Leica RM2025. This microtome is actually a newer and some people say actually a better and smoother microtome than the 820 that we have. The only problem with this particular one and why I don't use it quite as much is this chuck here is miserable to try to adjust. It couldn't be a harder one to adjust for, and it takes quite a bit of practice. So. Um, I don't even want to release it and show you it's such a pain. Basically, this one is not an XY, it's kind of an XYZ. So when you, when you release this lever, you release it and it kind of pulls out ever so slightly, then you can adjust these. And what happens is if you turn it, if you turn this one, what's going to happen is it's going to go like a circular kind of thing forward and back. If you turn this one, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to be coming forward and kind of around into a circle. It's not up, down, left, right. I don't know why they designed it that way, but that's the way des these designers did this particular model. So I really recommend nobody mess with this. If somebody does mess with it and you have to adjust it, good luck. Have fun. Um, I feel for you because it's not fun even for me to adjust. But if you do, I recommend that you use my block method that I just showed you earlier with the 820. I recommend you use that type of block method with this one. Um, and just turn it this way. Make yourself a bunch of blank blocks and just keep fooling with it until you get it right and keep turning the block until it's pretty much in range within a few um, strokes. On this microtome, this one uses um, what we call low profile blades, which are different than the 820 uses. We use the um, high profile blades for the 820 and low profile on this one. Again, they're AccuEdge blades, the same company. We found those work nicest. This is our um, knife release lever on this microtome and it's got this nice little slide here. This is what releases the whole knife um, holder, is this lever right here. The safety lock on this microtome is on the side here. Another difference between this 2035 or 2025 or 2025 and the 820 is the advance and the retract wheel. On the 820, to bring the, um, the chuck forward, you actually turned it back towards the wall. To bring the chuck um, backwards, back towards the wall, you actually brought the chuck forward. This is the opposite. When you want the chuck to come forward, you turn the advance and retract wheel forward. And when you want the chuck to go backwards, you turn the advance and retract wheel back towards the wall. This one actually makes more sense than, than the mechanism and how that one functions. So. It'll be fun when you switch back and forth trying to use those microtomes, adjusting to that difference. Okay, so let's put a, um, again, I save um, used blades that I use for cutting but are still good for facing. And then after I use them a second time for facing, and then I discard them. So I'm going to start, I always start at one edge of the blade. I always start from left and go to the right edge, but you may do do something differently. You may start from the right and go to left if that's whatever you want to do. I see that it's nicely seated in its holder. 
So now I'm gonna clamp it again. You don't need to crank something. There's no need to put this this way. As a matter of fact, you could end up kind of torquing the blade a little bit in this holder. And again, you won't get good section. So just a nice little tightening is good enough. Just a little clamp and that's it. And you'll find the point where it cuts the nicest. I'm gonna back this off the, um, off the blade by going backwards. And this is all locked, so everything's good that way. And I have it um, as aligned as nicely as I can to give good sections right now. And I really recommend that nobody be allowed to ad adjust this microtome without Jeff or Monica's permission. Again, you're going to leverage yourself with your thumb here and use a couple fingers and you can put the block in or out. Make sure that the microtome is locked when you're taking the block in and out. Okay, so I had a little paraffin on it. So we're gonna um, release the lock lever and we're gonna bring it forward. Now again, the same as with, with the 820, I have this set in a range that's kind of midway between too far back with the chuck and too far forward. That mid-range is for optimal cutting. I, this is our microns here. This is set at five. This microtome cuts so smoothly like butter. It's really a nice smooth like air action. Um, some people are more comfortable cutting at five. You can cut it at four. You really can cut nicely at two microns with this particular microtome. So I'm going to um, rough face this block and as I'm facing it, I want to see that it's aligned. It's got a little bit of a squeak, but I don't want to adjust it because I know it's cutting its ribbon nicely. You can see the ribbon. Beautiful right away. Somebody had readjusted this um, a while ago. I think it might have been me actually trying to demonstrate it and that was a mistake. It took me quite a while to get this back to giving the nice ribbon. Okay, so as you can see it's nice and even and facing nice and even so I recommend nobody adjust it. And this block isn't even chilled and it's giving, doing nicely. So. And this one has a different, um, remember I told you about the stroke and the rhythm? You need a little bit different stroke and rhythm for this one. So you'll have to get, you'll have to learn that. So once you get used to this one and the nice rhythm and stroke you need, it's gonna be different for that one. And you kind of learn if you try both out and try to get used to both microtomes for your own um, information, um, you'll get to see that and feel that difference. Okay, so you can see. Now if I wanted to, it's not completely facing the block, but I was just checking its alignment. So for facing, I would just simply do what I did for that. Instead of, you know, I would bring it forward and keep turning. So this is rough facing. Bring it forward and keep turning till I saw that I've gotten fully into my tissue. And I haven't. I see it's just when I catch the light, I can only see that it's I got part of the head and a little part of the torso of this mouse embryo, so it needs to be faced some more. I'm going to leverage with my thumb, two forefingers, put the block back in. Now you can float out a, um, a bad ribbon onto the water bath too and look to see if you're not used to getting your eye used to seeing if you're into the block enough. You can use your float it out onto the um, water bath and check your ribbon that way and see if you've got the full section that you want. Okay, again, you don't want to, if it was a new blade, since this is a facing blade, it doesn't matter so much, but if it were a new blade, you wouldn't want to touch the blade edge. You'd want to brush up or use a gauze and, and wipe up. Now, I sometimes use a gauze when I'm turning because it gets kind of sticky and thick with paraffin on the handle here. And I'm going to continue facing because I haven't gotten fully into the tissue. 
That was rough facing. Now I'm going to um, face some more smooth facing by not return, by not turning the advance and retract wheel. I'm just going to do a, a rapid smooth facing. My interest is not a ribbon at this point. It's just to get into the tissue, and that gets it gets it smooth. Leverage with my thumb, and I'm going to take a look. And now I'm fully into my area of interest, and I would soak my block. And that's it for this microtome. Again, um, it, this micro, this um, model of microtome needs to have oil. So again, call um, Mac, Matt Mincer at Tech One Biomedical and have him at least once a year, possibly twice a year. You should get this all preventive maintenance and oiled up. And that's it for microtoming. I wanted to mention one more thing about microtoming. If you're ever microtoming and you feel that um, the block is like grabbing into the knife, like it's wanting to grab and chunk into the paraffin, that's, that means something somewhere is loose. Either you haven't tightened down the whole knife holder, you haven't tightened this adjustment lever, something somewhere is really loose. Or you haven't tightened the blade in, you haven't clamped the blade. So just know that and be aware of that um, when you're microtoming.